Hey, if you're looking to get your music up on all the platforms in one fell swoop, I highly recommend DistroKid. It's super simple to use. It's affordable. I've used it. And for our listeners, if you go to distrokid.com forward slash VIP forward slash talk guitars, you will get 30% off. That's distrokid.com forward slash VIP forward slash talk guitars. I hope you dig it. Hey everybody, it's Chris and Rick Talk Guitars, and we are going to talk about guitarists, guitarists, or guitarists, guitar players. You know, like a man's man, or a woman's woman, or a golfer's golfer, or whatever. You know, there's that that adage, and we thought it'd be cool to talk about a guitarist's guitarist. And I'm really curious to know, Chris, what your definition of that is. Because I kind of have one in my mind, but I'd love to hear what yours is, so I can rip it apart. Yeah, what's your definition of a guitarist's uh, guitar? The definition, mine, is, has always been something like a, a guitar player who guitar players can appreciate more than anybody else. And it may be on the surface, they may not be technically, like a lot of people won't get that. You know, maybe your average listener will like, you know, yeah, I don't know what's so special, but I'm not I'm not hearing anything. Oh, but God. somebody who's, who's a student of the guitar that's played it for a while while we'll sense these things and just you know really appreciate where they come from their approach and their tone and whatever it is so cool. yeah i mean if you do a google search for it because i wanted to do that because the more uh -huh. i thought about this topic the more i started to get confused by it it's the one that come came up first was jeff beck uh -huh. well i agree i mean anybody i mean but that's yeah. to me though it's more than a guitarist guitar i think it's anybody who knows what a guitar is our music is can be impressed and think that's a good yeah. guitar player yeah. So, I mean, but I'm not going to argue with that. Like I said, every, everybody's different. But when you start thinking about this, and this is what I find interesting, it says a lot about you as a guitar player. And you start thinking about it, and it gives you directions that maybe, like, you can explore to even be a better guitar player. These things that you like in somebody that you see that nobody else might, you know, might not notice that you yeah. like is, is like, I don't know, it's, it's kind of just an interesting thing to think about. Well, who would you, who is... Who's somebody on your list that you would consider a guitarist's guitarist? Oh, I have so many. The one that I thought of almost immediately was Mike Campbell, because, yeah. and I'm sure there's a lot of guitar players who wouldn't agree with that. They just wouldn't get it. But I think a lot of guitar players, at least the ones that I know, like can appreciate that he can do something that a lot of people can't do. Yeah. And I've probably said, I don't know if I've said it before on the show, but I've said it, that he can work in the in the context of a brilliant Tom Petty pop song that's like super hooky, infectious, yeah. memorable, and he can put a guitar lick in there that you can walk away from the song humming, but yeah. still remember the the song. So it's like that the ability to do that and just to choose perfect memorable parts that you know you can whistle and things like that just makes it to me something that someone who's spent time trying to come up with parts, guitar parts and played yeah. parts and you know, come up with memorable things can really have appreciation for how that's something that's not really easy to do. Yeah. And he did it, does it consistently, you know what I mean? So yeah. he's probably the first one. But honestly, I, I was thinking about this too, is I'm just impressed by just about every guitar player I hear. Something, <laughs> I find something that to be impressed by. I, somebody like Bill Frizzell, like to oh, me, yeah. somebody that, I mean, he he's just across the board, a great guitar player, yep. but he's someone, once you've been playing guitar for a while, studying guitar, and you start to feel like you're getting good, you just listen to what he does. And just, yeah. it seems like effortless and the things that he comes up with. I'm pretty sure that people that don't really play guitar can appreciate that, but I think a guitarist probably a little extra, you know, yeah, probably be able to appreciate it. Yeah. That's too off the top of my head. What, how about you? Well, it's cool because I thought a lot about this too. And, and I thought about what my definition is and I agree with your definition. And then I would add like, well, I mean, I'm probably not add, I, you probably feel this way too, but it's also just kind of the way, kind of their personality and kind of the way they fit into the family of the greater community of guitar players, right? Like, or how they're seen by other guitar players, not just for the guitar playing, but just kind of for their, their love of the instrument or their love of playing music, right? Like I think of guys like Wadi Wachtel, for instance, like he just seems right. like, like a, he loves guitar. He loves playing music. He it's, he, it's his life literally. And there are other people like him, but to me, he came to mind because he just embodied this, kind of joy and hearing him talk about like when he was 
needed a guitar and, and, you know, he, he practiced in the, the same practice place as Crosby, Stills and Ash and Young. And, and Stephen Stills goes, yeah, go into our room and pick one out and, and I'll sell it to you. And he picked out, you know, the burst and, <laughs> and just kind of this, you know what I mean? So this kind of like familial attitude towards all of his peers and all of the people that are in music together. And so that's what I kind of see as, as other ingredients in guitarists, guitarists definition or, or, or philosophy. And then I, I, I totally agree with the Frizzell thing. Another person that came to mind was um, David Lindley. Oh, yeah. I never really, I never really appreciated him when I was younger, but as I got older and listened to his stuff and, and he played slide guitar and, and just weird, he also was into weird gear. That's another thing I think about right. maybe a, a guitarist, guitarist is somebody who really appreciates a gear that isn't like the norm, right? Like, he, and he loved all those weird lap steels and weird old harmonies and all this cool, funky silver tones, all this cool gear. And he made it sound so cool. And, and, you know, he, he played with Jackson Brown and all these other cats. And so he came to my mind too. When we, yeah, were that's goes That speaks to what you just talked about. Like personality, his personality was the cheapo guitar, you know, yeah. that, that kind of thing. But yeah, running on empty, the Jackson Brown record is a really good example. And I used that when I was, had pedal steel in my band and I was like doing recording. I was kind of going for that feel. Another guitarist, guitarist for me is Neil Young. And oh, people yeah, will just yeah, yeah. go on, guitar players will go on about how he can't play the guitar and all this stuff, you know? And it's like people like us who've been playing for a thousand years and go, the way that he attacks that, the visceral way that he attacks that guitar and the, and the melodies he comes up with and the way he puts them into those songs and wraps yep. his voice around all that stuff, it's yep. fucking brilliant and I wish totally. I could do that. You know, yes, it's not a technical thing to me. You know, it's right. not a technical. It's not like, you know, sports gets stuck into everything. And that's always problematic yep. when you when you throw in the sports thing and it's like, this is better than this because it's more it's more complicated, mm -hmm. all that stuff. And with a guitarist, guitarist for me anyways, none of that stuff. I mean, complicated doesn't you know, doesn't doesn't matter at all. It's just something. And I like the element that you put in there because I hadn't thought about that. It's like the vibe, the essence, the musicality exactly. of the person. From thinking about this, I've kind of like changed my view on all these, all these things. I can probably name like a thousand guitarist guitarists for me anyways. Yeah. You know? It's like Mark Rebeau in the Tom Waits era, that kind of crazy guitar that yeah. he did like on Rain Dogs. Then when I was only playing for a short while, I thought it was really, it blew my mind. And yeah. now even after playing for many years, it still blows my mind that yeah. That, stuff he pulls out. So yeah, it's an interesting thing to think about. And I think it's kind of a useful tool for evaluating your own playing style. Maybe. Exactly. And, and again, as we're talking about this, what I kept coming back to is, is not, cause I guess the guitarist guitarist to me, that phrase kind of evokes to me more, not so much the sport or comparison stuff, more just appreciation. And as you were talking about that other guitar player, I think not in terms of like, oh, that person's underappreciated or something, but more like under the radar, right? right? Like that person's not famous or recognizable or whatever, but that doesn't mean, you know, because there's probably plenty of appreciation for that cat. Like you're saying, like we, guitar players, we seek out all these different players. And if, right. and if you're in the circle, if you're like a session person, people know you. And so you're appreciated because people call you and pay you money to come play on their sessions. Right. And so, but I think the average public views it as like, well, I, I haven't never heard that guy. And he, you know, he's not in the same sphere as Neil Young or Jeff Beck or all these other guys or whatever. So he's underappreciated or whatever. But anyway, yeah. So it's cool because I, the, 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 I think that the language we use about it can help guide conversations more in terms of not comp competition and not sports, but rather just appreciation. That's why I think right. this topic is really cool. And you alluded to speed too. And I think speed is such a fucking overrated thing in guitar. Like speed doesn't, who gives a fuck how fast you can play? Like there was a great, God, who said it? Ah, I'll find it. But it was a guitar player. Oh, it was Frank Zappa saying, yeah, I mean, because he was, it was pragmatic about it because somebody asked him about it. He goes, you know, hey, a, a person that can play a thousand notes in a minute, you got to take your hat off to him. But, you know, I'm paraphrasing and I can't remember, but basically what is he saying, you know, like, and it's about, you know, as you and I talk about, it's about how you fit this instrument into a song and make the song cool and, or make any kind of music cool, you know, so speed, I think speed just gets focused on like, God, 
you know, all the social media shit, there's all these people that can just play a, a mile a minute and, do, and and it's like, if that's all you can do, uh, cool. I guess that's your thing. But I really grew out of that a while ago. I, I That was really, really a bad thing in the eighties. I remember that. Like, yeah. this is really the first time I'm thinking about the whole package, I guess, like the whole, like that you were talking about. Usually I've been thinking about just their guitar playing, you know, what they play and the music yeah. they make and how they create the music. So it's, I do agree with that. The whole package of like the, somebody who just lives and loves, you know, music and yeah, that sort of, it's, it's their essence. So yeah, now I'll probably come up with some more. Well, it's, well, again, I, I it kind of psychs me up because it, it made me just start thinking, like I mentioned Zappa, I think he's a guitarist, guitarist and he's so weird, but he was a geek. He was into gear. He was into modding his gear. He was into playing guitar, but from his headspace, from his own, you know, uh, his own weird perspective. And so I, and he, I think he appreciated other guitar players too in, in yeah. his way. Yeah. And, but like you're saying for me, that was, that's what I thought of too, is the whole package. It's the personality. It's, it's how they approach the guitar. It's, it's this whole thing, this aura around this person that makes them a guitarist's guitarist. But you're right. I mean, I think it means different things to different people. And but I think whatever you can do in conversations to take out the competitive sports bullshit nature of that, because to me, that is it's it's kind of a killjoy. It's like, oh, you know, because and the, the opposite of that is people get pissed off when somebody's left off of a list of 100 right. greatest guitar players of all time. It's like, really, do you really give a shit if you dig their playing and shit? Who cares if they're on some list created by some ding dong that just wants to get it's the sports thing. It's yeah. the sports thing. It's, yeah. It like creeps into a lot of things, and it has yeah. no place in art. It's yeah. like my team. You left my team off. My team is good. It's like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's sports, and there should be like a clear belong. separation of sports and rock. I mean, yeah. sports is great, whatever. You know, not my thing, but it's great. But rock and music and art yeah. aren't sports. They're different things. Yeah. They're different, you know, disciplines and different, you know. So, like, yeah, don't stick sports in art. I say no, and and. I think some of my favorite players throughout the years are people that just looked like they were genuinely having fun. Jerry Reed comes to mind. Like that guy looked like he was having fun 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And he was, he's one of the best finger style pickers ever to play the guitar. And he played funky seventies tellies and seventies Gibsons. And I love seeing him play with Chet Atkins. Cause you know, Chet, Atkins, they were like uh, fire and ice. Like he was this kind of crazy silly joke and hillbilly and and uh atkins was this kind of staid serious you know he had a sense of humor but he was really dry and kind of stoic you know and they made it was such a cool contrast to see those guys play together because jerry reeb was like oh yeehaw check it chester and and uh so he he came to my mind too like i it, i recommend anybody go watch a bunch of old footage of uh, jerry reeb playing the guitar and you'll you'll be you'll be happy because that's another thing he brings that joy to his playing you know what i mean and that's yeah. another thing I think a guitarist guitarist does too, is they exude some, like Frizzell for me does that, and Jerry Reed does that. They exude other stuff through their playing that you pick up on. I think it's it's a cool conversation to have because, again, like I said, it brings, it makes you think about all the other things that, that come into play with a musician, their their personality, how they think about their peers, how they fit into that kind of universe of of musicians. Um, and for you and me, I think we kind of became hip to session people and really appreciated them because of what they bring. That's another thing too, I think that is, that I think a lot of players and people who know appreciate are all these session people who just have created all this music that we love and enjoy, um, that are, are under the radar, but that's, they're appreciated. Yeah. That's, that's, a, I'm glad you mentioned that because one of mine, when I was trying to think of like the ones that came to mind the quickest was Reggie Young, who I learned about, even though I'd been listening to his music since I was a little kid, yeah. I actually learned about him from being in a John Prine tribute band. Or, mm -hmm. So I learned, and I, and I actually liked his stuff so much. I sought him out in every interview I could find and all these videos, and I just loved him. And the same reason is, is such a memorable, I mean, the opening to, oh, what the fuck song is that? Son of a Preacher, man. The opening, the, oh, man. the, the chime yeah. and that. Oh, that's, that's so him. good. 
It's so simple, and it's like, why the fuck didn't I think of that? Another one, Ed King. He's another one. And I didn't really oh, know man. about Ed King. When I was a kid and I was into Skinner, it was the shouty ones, you know, like, you know, the end of Freebird, the dude wailing. But now I start thinking something like On the Hunt, that rift, On the Hunt. And, and I'm pretty sure that's Ed King because it's very close yeah. to working for MCA. And it has Ed King written all over it. But he had these really great phrases and this really great way of doing stuff. And the fact that he's the person who knew how to play the solo to Sweet Home Alabama in the right dude, key. Dude, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So he was one, but yeah, Reggie Young was one that I just went on this huge kick of, and I can't play a lot like him, but there's other things that I found in his playing that I was really psyched about because it was stuff that I had been doing for a long time. Like he does these sliding six that I've used forever to kind of almost to a fault, but just seeing how he used them and like, it just, it was just really cool. Um, so That's yeah, awesome. no, a lot of studio players. These are guitar players you don't even know that you're influenced by, but they're yeah. they're there because you've heard them so much. That what is that? Um, Louis Shelton's another one that was a good person that we've all heard and like don't yeah. know and we've been influenced by. So yeah, I think definitely studio guitar players can be guitarists, guitarists. Yeah. Well, I think it's cool because they are appreciated, even by non-musicians. All the people who listen to that music love that music, and the, that guitar part is what makes that song so appealing to everybody who hears it like son of a preacher man that that intro is it's so simple but it's so beautiful like um i forget who the guitar player was from motown but who did the intro to uh, my girl which is super simple but it's it's cool and it's and that's an iconic right when you hear it you know what song that is all right and so it's super simple but you know good luck trying to come up with something that cool yeah I yeah mean, that was like me for on the hunt. I'm like, that's so easy. Like that's so I'm gonna <laughs> Why didn't I'm, I think that, of that? you know, think about it. I'm gonna do I'm gonna make a song that has something like that. It's like no fucking way. It's like I can't. I mean I know. Yeah. Where it comes from. It's like Well, and I'm know. so in my head too. If I come up with something that simple and it sounds cool, I'm like, no, it can't be cool because it's too it's, simple. It's you know what I mean? Simple, I sabotage right? myself, right? Rather than just go with it and say, Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> So right. I appreciate people who can do that, who can come up with something simple and just go with it and say, yeah, I like trust that. themselves. Yeah, trust yeah. themselves. Yeah. And and I think the family of musicians that we talk about is um, that's the, what I thought about when when we talk talked about this concept of, of, of guitarist guitarist is just I thought about the, the fam, the wider family of musicians and producers even and everybody in the, in the mix that that works with people or has heard people or, or um, wants to get somebody on a session. Yeah. And, and uh, lots of people pop into our heads now that we have this discussion, which is kind of cool. So hopefully people listening will, will think about it themselves and think about guitarists they like or musicians they like, for instance. Yeah. One thing that occurred to me when I was thinking about this, cause I'm no spring chicken. It's like, <laughs> you know, years and years ago, I'd aspire to be somebody that was like really fast, good, technically a, uh -huh. a guitar player. Now it's like, shit, I'd love it if I was ever thought of as a guitar guitarist by the time I died. Oh, so it gives totally. you like something to shoot for, like maybe coming up with something that's brilliantly simple, you know, or just having that essence where you're just, you know, you just have such a love of the guitar that people pick up on it and shit like yeah. that. I don't know what I'm trying to say, but something no, like that. I totally know what you're trying to say. And, and that's why another reason I appreciate all these guitar players that maybe are under the radar is they make you think in different ways and inspire you. Because that's what's happened to me over the course of my career playing guitar too, is <clears throat> exactly going on that journey from, you know, when you're a young kid liking the shiny objects and the fast shit and then and then really coming to appreciate just the soulful, simple approach to some music that just kills you. It just, you know, it uh, that's the perfect part for that song. That's so cool. Yeah, and being well-rounded because you can still appreciate, you can watch Jeff Beck, like do oh, his like... Yeah person from outer space playing guitar in your jaw hitting the floor and it's like <laughs> i like that but i do like son of a preacher man sliding six harm harmonic things like that super yeah. simple and super complicated so that's what's so great about guitar there's yeah. no you know there's no one or either or with yeah. like being technical or being simple and brilliant and uh, yeah and, and and i i guess another trait that i really appreciate about guitarists guitarists is is some guitar players openness to to keep learning a, a guitar and stuff like Alex Lifeson comes to mind. Right? I remember when I was a kid and I was, I was, you know, Oh, he's taking classical guitar lessons. Oh, that's so cool. You know, and he incorporated that into some rush songs and stuff, <laughs> but, um, and just reading about different guitar players that, you know, they're big time musicians and they have bands that are big and they, they recording all this stuff. 
but they keep trying to get better at their craft, you know, right. and trying to learn. And so I, that's another trait I really appreciate about certain people. It's, it's kind of hard not to, it's a journey, but you know, then you go back to someone like Neil Young and I don't really, he seems like he's just like a really like talented, like guitar. Like he's like a singer songwriter, guitar player. You know, it's like he yeah. does the guitar, he appreciates it. He loves it, but it's like, he doesn't obsess over it, but he has this thing and he does have this relationship with it. You know, and I really, really love his voice and his guitar is kind of like his voice. It's just like this old, it's, it just reminds me of like a, an old Martin or something. It's just this creaky yeah. thing has such a presence and the way that he can combine them is something that I, you know, I've always really liked. I don't know where I was going with that with coming from what I was, you were talking about, but anyway, I digress. <laughs> well, I, I, I kind of made the connection again between that those traits in Neil Young are kind of what draws me to him as a guitar player. And consider I consider that a guitar player's guitar player where he, He's idiosyncratic. He approaches the instrument his own way with his own personality and his own inflection and everything. Again, like, I mean, it ties into what we talk about, about appreciation and kind of the metrics people have in their heads about what is a good singer or what is a good guitar player. And hopefully as people get older, they start to open their minds up to say, because I sure did. I mean, I was, you know, I was that kind of thought. I was, I thought that way when I was younger, like, oh my God, that person's got a shitty voice or, oh my God, you know. Um, but then once you realize, no, they're singing in their voice and that's the honesty that they bring to that and the, the the personality that they bring to that is so cool. And so, and that's what you want. You want to be a person where you hear that person instantly and in, in a second, you know who it is. Mm -hmm. You know, that's Bob Dylan. You know, it's Neil Young. You know, it's Joan, Joni Mitchell. You know, it's uh, anybody, you know. And that's what people want. And so I really appreciate that about artists, their own approach to their instrument or their vocals. And I, yeah, it, it makes me happy. All right. Well, I, I really dug that conversation, man. I mean, maybe it'll resurface in the future, but um, that was fun. And I hope you guys out there get something from this and, and think about it in terms of, uh, yeah, I mean, that's another thing. Just think about it in terms of who you, are your favorite players and who you consider to be guitarists, guitarists or or any other musicians. It's kind of a fun exercise. But anyway, as always, thanks for listening. We really appreciate it. We're on the Ruinous Media Network, which we're really psyched to be a part of. We have DistroKid as a sponsor, which we're also psyched about. Go to our website, chrisandrick.guitars.com. Uh, check us out on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Chris, what do you got? As always, play guitar. 